Good morning, and welcome to another gathering of the remnant. There has been some moments in life when, when they occur, it's historical, even life-changing. As with the verdict in the George Floyd, Derek Chauvin court case, there's just no getting around it. It was a life-changing moment. I hope every church leader in America and around the world speaks to their congregants on this decision because it's important to hear from the people of God. Whether you're a believer or not, it's important to hear the differing opinions because it determines our humanity, our adherence to God's word to love. It's been high time since we've separated the wheat from the tares, the good from the bad, the right from the wrong, the word of God from the words of men. The verdict reminds me of the moment in Exodus after Moses returned from the mount with the Ten Commandments only to find his beloved Israel making golden calves, worshiping graven images, committing adultery and all kinds of sin. And there Moses stood at the gate of the camp and said, let all those who are on the Lord's side come to me. And all the sons of Levi, the priestly tribe, gathered together with him. And the ones that did not choose the Lord's side were swallowed up in the earth and killed on that day. So it's important to determine whose side you're on when it comes down to these kinds of life-changing moments. And make no mistake about it. No matter which side you're on, whether it's the Floyd side or the Chauvin side, it is an eternal life-determining moment. But for now, come. Gather with the remnant. Let us engage our God, nourish our people, restore our faith, and equip ourselves for the work, the will, and the ways of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen and amen. I am the pastor, the Reverend Dr. Coach J, and I'm blessed to be in service with you today. Come on, let's worship together.
listen to the sound of power on my lips. Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. Who are you, great mountain, that you should not bow low? Jesus has broken never lost a battle we listen to the sound of power on Everybody wanting justice. 
Let us not lose sight of the one who actually gives justice. The one who started it all. You know the end result. You know the end result. No matter what the jury jury says, no matter what the judge that sits in our offices and our courtrooms, Lord, it, it don't matter what they say. For you have the final say. Remnant Speaks, that's our podcast, is going to be held on Tuesday at 6.45. I've been on one of these before. It's an amazing experience, and I think you should tune in if you haven't. Also, we want you to tune in to our Soul Food Bible Study. That's going to be on Thursday, also at 6.45. But if you can, please try and make this live, because we can connect with our audience a little bit better that way. But anyways, it's going to be on our Facebook page. Um, also, I want to ask if you've received our newsletter, because if you haven't, you got to let us know so we can add you to the list. We started our children's uh, Sunday school, Crumbles for Christ. Please register your children virtually so when we're back to face to face, our children will uh, already have a connection. Here's Miss T for more de- de- details. Hello to our Promise for Christ family and friends. These are the 
announcements um, for the next up and coming month. Uh, for May 2nd, we will be having another virtual service on May 9th. We will have another kids check and we'll be doing better this time with making sure all the kids check in and everything, everything on time the way it's supposed to be. Um, May 16th, we will do a meetup at um, the beach. We will keep everything posted for you all um, as far as all details and times and things to meet. On the 6th, uh, I'm sorry, the 23rd, we will have the conversation with Josh. We also will have a conversation with Josh this for Sunday. So everybody go ahead and tune in. Um, we will have the time posted. You can go ahead and log in about 10... 1030 and we'll have everything situated for everybody to start their conversations with Josh for this fourth Sunday. Um, one is the fifth Sunday, May 30th, we will be live. Um, so we'll be at an active service for everybody, for the kids to get on and, you know, be a part of what we're doing. Um, and then coming June, I'm sorry, I'm reading my paper. Coming June 5th, we're going to have an out-of-school bash. Um, more details will come about that as follows. Um, the more we build up and get things going. But we hope to see you this Sunday with conversation for Josh. We ask each of you to come and be a part of our Divot to Pivot Golf Classic on Friday, July 9th, 2021. It will be held at Crystal Lake Golf Course in Hampton, Georgia. Go to www.divottopivot.com for more information. Well, that's pretty much it, but I want to close off by saying please be safe. Please be aware of your surroundings before you leave the house. And thank God when you return home safely. I hope to see you next week. As I expressed last week, the next few sermons you will hear from me will be entitled, The Images of God. It's taking a look at God from an anthropomorphic position. And that is looking at God as we see ourselves. So, come. Go with me to 2 Chronicles. We'll start at the 16th chapter. Now, 2 Chronicles is Old Testament. You might have to ruffle the pages a little bit and find it. I'll give you the time to find it. Um, and while you're still looking for it in your Bible, we'll place it on the screen for you. Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 from the New King James Version. The Word. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this, you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. So ends the reading of God's word, but never the power contained therein. From the Image of God series, I would like to entitle this second sermon heard in your hearing as the images of God, the eyes of God, the eyes of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, help us. Nothing more nothing less, nothing else. Amen. I believe that there is a distinct difference between eyesight and vision. To me, eyesight is the ability to see physical objects with one's own eyes. Eyesight is needed to circumnavigate the things of this world, to move around, to find, to search, to seek the physical things in this world. Remember the kid game? I don't know, y'all may be too young for this, but we used to play a kid game known as, which would you rather have? And we would say, which would you rather have? 
a hamburger or a hot dog? Which would you rather have, your sight or your feelings? And for me, I would always choose sight every time. What would you rather have, hearing or sight? Give me sight. Which would you rather have, taste or sight? Give me sight. So whenever we played this game, and it's funny that I remember this, but I've always chosen sight. Now, my godmother has instilled in me from the book of Brown, by the way, the understanding that I ought to speak what I seek until I see what I say. Speak what I seek until I see what I say. This ideal brings the unseen into the seen is a powerful God-like attribute. Remember in Genesis, we find that God stepped out of nothingness and spoke into existence all that we have, had, and will see. Ex nihilo is the term. But before one can speak it into existence, one has to see it first, and that takes vision. The ability to see the unseen before it becomes seen is vision. This visionary attribute does not come by way of personal thought or wisdom or ruminations of a human nation. Unseen vision can only come from the unseen God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yet, don't get it twisted though. The ability to see the world for what it really is is essential in learning how to see ourselves through the eyes of God. For the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In our text, we find that the major character of our scriptural text is Asa, the first king of Judah. When Asa became king, he immediately instituted spiritual reforms for the people of Judah. He got rid of the idols and the places where people had been worshiping false gods. And he was called to do what remnant has been called to do. And that's to turn the people back to God. And that's what remnant is here for, is to help turn our young adults back to God. Well, in the case of Judah, as a nation, they were facing a serious problem. A huge million-man Ethiopian army was coming to attack them. They had over 300 chariots and horses invading Judah, and Asa sought the help of the Lord through prayer. And God... God heard Asa's prayer and assisted Asa and Judah in defeating the Ethiopians. As Asa was coming back from the victory, the prophet Hananiah came out to meet him with a word from the Lord. He said to Asa, the Lord is with you. When you look for him, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. You see, having seen how the Lord had given them victory over the Ethiopians, no one in Judah was about to forsake the Lord. They was like, man, we with God. Man. He's with us. And, and all the things that he's done, he's mighty in battle. Remember cheers to jeers? You see, so, so after he wins this victory, Asa was poised to have a long and prosperous reign over Judah. Yet, like many of us do, 
when we come into power, we begin to look at ourselves and others around us as the reason for our success. And we forget about God. We don't think God is watching us anymore. We think that God has given it to us and turned it over to us and we got the steering wheel, so we go where we want and we do as we please and we curse who we want and we bless who we choose. Well, it didn't take very long for Judah to be tested again. But rather than looking for God, this time Asa looked for man. And then Hananiah reminded Asa of the past when they had been invaded by the Ethiopians and how he looked to the Lord and the Lord delivered them. Hananiah uh, uh, then uttered these remarkable words. For the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. So what's the context here? What, what are you saying? What am, what am I trying to say? Well, this tells me that there's a couple things going on in this text. It tells me that God, one, looks to help his children. And by reason of his own, God chooses to look to men, women, boys, and girls to do his work, his will, and his way. God also is looking to work through us to do what he's calling us to do. Putting the text in the proper context then, it, it tells of the kind of person God is looking for. The kind of person whose heart is looking for him. The Hebrew word, word shalem. Shalom, which is transcribed perfectly in our text, can also be translated as completely. So in other words, God is looking for those whose heart is completely looking for him. For the eyes of the Lord literally runs to and fro incessantly throughout the world searching and watching for opportunities to help those who are looking for him. God's eyes are probably the most important anthropomorphic organ known to humankind. We believe God's eyes to be clairvoyant omniscient, the gateway to our souls. God can see into our hearts, our minds, and our souls. God's eyes has always been associated with intelligence, light in dark places, vigilance and persistence, conscious and truth. My experience in college in New Mexico reminds me of a God's eye. In Spanish, it's oja dioso. It's, it's a spiritual and prayerful object made by weaving a design out of yarn upon a wooden cross. Some of my Mexican-American believers see the spiritual eye of oja dios as the power to see and understand things unknown to the physical eye. Cannot be denied that men are told to look other men in the eye as a sign of honesty. Yes? Our eyes don't lie. There are windows to our souls. They show and tell the truth. No matter what face we put on in any situation, our eyes, just like our body language, gives us away. And they say more than our words could ever say. Yet the eyes of God 
can not only look at you or look out for you, but the eyes of God can look through you. God uses the eyes of his believers to see what they see. This is why God can answer prayer before the prayer is spoken. This is why God can see the lions in Africa waking up at the same time as the sun is setting in Clayton County, Georgia. God's eyes can see the difference between the things of this world and the things of heaven. God's eyes can see the turning of all four winds of the world and the turning of the waves of the seas. The eyes of God can see your wrongs before they happen. God's eyes can see around corners, through doors, even through the eyes of the blind. If you don't believe me, ask blind by the maze. God can see the unseen, the unthought, and the calamity to come. I believe the eyes of God were peering through the camera lens of that 17-year-old Darnella Frazier's camera on that God-observed day in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and decided to allow justice to ride, ride down like a mighty river and righteousness like a mighty stream. stream. Some might attempt to hide the hate they have in their heart, but God can see it, and with his mighty hand, his majestic hands, and his keen eyesight can turn the outcome into our favor if we just hold on and look at what God looks at. If we just hold on, saints, God sees your pain. If we can just hold on and look with God's eyes, we can, God can see your hurt. If you just hold on, saints, and look through God's eyes, God seeing the injustice done to you. If you can just hold on, saints, God has looked into your future and God has a plan to prosper you, not to allow evil to consume you, but to give you a future and a hope. So when you look for him, you will find him. When you pray to him, you will hear him. When you seek him, you will find him. When you look for him with all your heart, how do you know this? Because the eyes of God tells me so. Look at life through the eyes of God, and the eyes of God will look for you. This has been a word of God for the people of God, for the edification of God's kingdom. Let us pray. In this very moment, O oh God, as you search to and fro the earth looking for one of your servants, we say, here am I. Send me. As you search near and far, looking for willing workers to go out and do your will, we say, here am I, send me. As you look up and down and all around trying to find a just heart that's looking for you, we say, here we are. We're yours, oh God. Your eyes are keenly sharp, oh Lord. Not only do they see us, but they see through us. They see into our future, and you've seen our past. You've forgiven us for our sins, and now we hope that we're able to make this journey last. Walking hand in hand with you, O oh Lord, willing to do all that you ask. We only ask that you allow us to see through your eyes at last. Come and bless each and every one under the sound of my voice. Give them the vision, the eyesight, the ability to see your will to see your work that needs to be done and to see your 
ways to get it done. And when you've done these things, we'll be ever so careful. Ever so careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Because it is you and you alone that so richly deserve this prayer. I pray, I ask to be heard in the one name that saves men, women, boys, and girls, save the name of Christ Jesus. It is in his name that I pray. And the people of God say, amen, amen, and amen. You know, God is constantly looking for those who is looking for him. And here at Remnant Fellowship, we're constantly looking for him. It's what we do because we know that God has given us the commission to extend our hand of fellowship so that we might come alongside with you That's how the eyes of God works. Through our eyes, he sees the help that is needed. And he tells us to go. And we're asking you to come. Come gather with the remnant. Get involved. Commit your gifts, your time, your talents to help us. Reach others like us that need God like we all do. We need you to come gather with us so that we might be able to sit down at God's table, engage ourselves, nourish ourselves, restore ourselves, and equip ourselves for Christian service. So like us. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Reach out to us, and we'll reach back to you. And we'll give you something that's more important than any other thing. And that's the love, the adoration, the encouragement that we need to go on just a little while longer. We are a giving church. And we ask that you give to us so that we might be able to give to others. So we live by 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. That says, this I say. Those who give sparingly, they reap sparingly. But those who give bountifully will reap bountifully. So let every man, woman, boy, or girl that has purpose in their heart to give, whatever it is that they shall give, so let them give. But not begrudgingly, not out of duty or necessity with the expectation of receiving something in return. But give because you know God loves a cheerful giver. Now here's the ways that you can give to remnant. You can go to Cash App and enter dollar sign Remnant Fellowship 17. Or you can go to PayPal. Enter remnantatl at gmail.com. Or you can write a check or money order, put it in an envelope, address it to Remnant Fellowship, 2045 Mount Zion Road, number sign 400, Morrow, Georgia, 30260. But before you do that, let's have our giving litany. Repeat after me. Let us give God what is right, not what is left. And he will surely bless that which is left with that which is right. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, by the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest 
rule and abide in this people henceforth now and forevermore let the people of God say hallelujah 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 thank you Lord go in peace sin no more and bless the Lord I am the Reverend Dr. Coach J and I've been blessed to be in service with you today now I only hope and pray that I'll see you again next Sunday God bless you and may heaven shine upon you.